Welcome to the MFR Coaches Podcast, where we talk about how you can create a six-figure MFR practice. I'm your host, Heather Hommel. Not only have I been practicing MFR for 11 years, I'm also a life and business coach, especially for MFR therapists. My goal is for you to understand how to get fully booked, how to talk to your clients, and how to make sure they understand what's possible for them with MFR treatment. I'm here to help you stop under earning, overworking, and burning out. I'll lend support so you can create the MFR practice you've always wanted. Learn how you can do it too, even if you live in a tiny town, and even if you're just starting out, and even if you've ran your practice for years. Let's go. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the MFR Coaches Podcast. Man, it's been a while since I've been behind this mic because I did so much pre-recording prior to the last cart open and to get me through some of the holidays without having to work on the podcast. So it's nice to be back. I love being behind this microphone and I love talking to all of you who are avid listeners to the podcast and welcome to all of my new listeners. I'm so happy you found this podcast and I am so happy you are here. So today I thought it would be fun to take you behind the scenes of my last cart open launch and just share everything with you about what it was like for me to experience it, go through a full evaluation of what went well, what didn't go well, and what I want to do differently next time. And just share with you all of the things because I'm super excited about the way it went. This is kind of a new way for me to do these things. And I think you guys too can glean some information from what I talk about and apply it into your businesses, even though you are not doing an open cart, closed cart as the way that you sell your MFR product. I just wanted to do this while I was fresh off the launch so you could hear in real time what my thoughts and feelings were about how this launch went. I have a cold now, so pardon my voice. (laughs) It just is what it is. It's what my body does after I do something big. And I'm just learning to accept that and also learning to figure out how I can prevent it. I'm doing better than ever as far as stress levels go with dealing with with my body going through these kinds of things. So let's talk about what goes into pulling off a cart open launch. And for anyone that's listening to this and is like, what in the hell is a launch? I'm going to tell you what that means first. So a launch is when you open enrollment for a specific amount of time and allow people to join your program or your offer. It's kind of coach speak. So just you don't have to relate to it at all in order to get something out of this. But what happens is we open for a specific amount of time and then we close the doors to enrollment and then we wait until the next time to allow people to join. We were trying out open enrollment from July through October when we first started this 12-month program and then decided to see what would happen and what we would create to determine which model is better for students as well as in my business by doing going back to a launch model. So things I like about students being able to join anytime, which is a non-launch model, the things I like is it's a fun surprise for me when someone joins because they can literally join anytime, 24 hours a day. I like that someone could just make a decision and join without waiting to get started and they can just get started. Things I don't like is you come into a room of now 80 people and you're just the only one there. <laughs> you know, I mean, you're the only new person there. So there's not this big welcome and there's not this big onboarding process where you feel like you are part of the group. So that part I don't love. It makes it unpredictable when people are going to join. So it makes it harder for me to plan big things for the group that I want everyone to experience. And it also creates less urgency to get started. So when you can join anytime, you might just wait forever because you can. And I don't like that. I do think that there's no benefit to waiting to join. And I, I like having people join in groups. So let's dive into what went well with this launch model. I had planned the outline for this launch starting in August. So that was right after we opened the brand new group. And I knew that I was going to do a live training and I knew what it was going to be on. So I had lots of room to create my sell MFR to anyone in any situation training. I really put a lot of time and effort and thought behind any training that I do publicly and inside just the group. Because I feel like if you're going to take the time to be with me in a room, a Zoom room for over an hour, the material really needs to be spicy for you. It really needs to be something that you need to learn and that you need to learn now. So I put a lot of time and effort into that. And I like having the space to create it. And also, once I lock onto an idea, I love executing it. Like I 
love it. So we picked dates that felt great and that gave us lots of room to plan and implement and execute. We planned and recorded lots of extra bonus podcasts and did hours of extra recordings to release during the lead up to the launch and during the open cart period. That's hours and hours and hours of extra time for both me and my podcast editor, Colette. She did an awesome job. The planning was just immaculate. It was so good. We also hit over 45,000 downloads before the cart even opened, which was so exciting. When you figure like this podcast is less than three years old and we've had 45,000 downloads now close to 47 as I record this. And by the time that this episode is aired, we'll probably be closer to 50K. So exciting. And I plan to go to a lot of MFR seminars in person to meet people, tell them what I do and make offers to help them, which is all part of that organic marketing that I teach inside my program, which is meet people, tell them you're an MFR therapist and make offers to help them. So I practice what I preach. And I just want you to know what that looks like inside my business too. I wrote and scheduled over 30 plus emails to go out daily before the car opening. And this these emails all drove people to attend the webinar. We had over 170 people sign up for the webinar, which was huge, especially considering my email list at the start of this was 300 people. <laughs> That's a lot of people. That's over half the list joined this webinar. And my intention was to create new leads and new people on my email list and grow my email list. And we did that. We grew the list by over 50 people, which was very exciting. And that's kind of a staggering statistic when you really think about having only 300 people on your email list and growing by 50. That's a big number. And I'm very proud of it. And I'm also really proud of the fact that I have low followers on Instagram and Facebook. The thing is, is like you can have lists and lists of thousands of people following you, thousands of people in your email, and it only matters the amount of people that are engaged with you and the amount of people that are taking action on the things that you want them to take action on. And I feel like every MFR therapist that I have on my list is engaged. The people that are in my program show up to everything. For example, we had three calls last week between the 12 month program, my mastermind, and then we did a bonus coaching call training. And, you know, some people are in both groups. So some people came to three calls last week. That's a high engagement and I love it. It's so fun. I'm in, I'm a member of other groups where I pay upwards of 15 to 25 K to be in these groups. And they, they don't even have this kind of turnout and they have hundreds of people in their program. So I'm very proud of the MFR therapists that I work with. They are locked and loaded and ready to go. So I said before, I wrote that webinar way in advance and was able to practice it multiple times. And because of that, I was able to get feedback on it and rewrite it a few times as well. And I really learned that I do not love hearing feedback on my writing and teaching skills. Like it's very painful for me, but I was able to still take the feedback and make changes and get clear on the results that I wanted people to have from the webinar and get clearer on how I wanted to present it. And because of that, I was able to deliver an outstanding product and it's going to live in my portal forever. So I'm very excited about that. The emails that I wrote for that 30 day lead up to the webinar were awesome. And I even enjoyed rereading them. And I always feel like if I can read my own content and be jazzed up and fired up from it, then someone else is likely having that experience too. And I just love being in love with the things that I put out. I love feeling proud of myself for putting these things out. I put so much time into writing these emails. You have no idea. (laughs) I'm writing every single email that you get. I don't have someone else doing it for me. So I'm very involved with that aspect of my business. We were able to reuse a lot of this email content onto the social media platforms, which is great and served as a time saver. And it also helped to solidify my messaging about selling MFR. I felt confident in my ability to teach selling MFR. And I really believe that this is one of the most important skills for MFR therapists to have. And I feel like I nailed that messaging. And we're going to be able to use it again in the future, which is awesome as well. We had close to 100 people join the live webinar and over 300 people download the podcast replay of the webinar afterwards and over 100 people rewatch the video replay. 
that's a lot of eyes on the content afterwards, which is very exciting. And I'm just hoping that For everyone that watched that, they were able to implement or see something that they were doing that was keeping them from selling MFR and that they were able to implement a new tool or a new skill into making selling MFR easier for them. We had so many questions uh, via email, DMs, all the places, even in person when I was seeing people at seminars and I was able to answer all of the questions to the best of my ability. I met so many therapists in person. I went to Rebounding in Nashville, Fascial Pelvis in Rochester, Minnesota, and MFR2 in Kansas City, all during the 30-day lead up to sell MFR. I traveled more (laughs) and better than ever. And I overcame a lot of anxiety from putting myself out there. Even when it was scary and painful for me to do these things, I still was able to do them. And I think I beat myself up a lot less than I normally have in the past. I think I've always thought, oh, I should change this aspect about myself. I should be better about it. I should like it more. It shouldn't be so hard for me. The truth of the matter is, is I am a person that has feelings of anxiety, that has sometimes feelings of not belonging. And I take that with me where I go. And what's worked out for me is that it doesn't have to stop me. So if any of you listening have those things too, I just want you to know that that doesn't have to be a no-go for you. It doesn't have to be a stopper. And I've found many ways to overcome those things and also just bring them with me without needing to change that part of myself. I feel like I really left everything on the table during this launch and I don't have any regrets. I feel like I went all the way in and it was also easy. There was an ease to it because of all of the planning, all the preparation, And also just a huge shout out to my team. I have the best support team ever. I have Meg, who's my, not only my assistant, but my co-coach. She does all the social media right now. My manager of Entreport, which is Amber, she did all of the tech and she was traveling and out of town and we did run into some tech issues, but she was able to quickly handle any problem that came up and It's just nice to be surrounded by a team like that. And also to mention my podcast manager, Colette, she does all of the mixing and the editing and the awesome commercials that you would hear throughout the time. Like those are all done by her and she puts out amazing work. So if you're ever thinking about starting a podcast, shout out to Colette McKenzie. You probably want to hire her. So The other thing that I feel like went great is we came up with a way to ship out the workbooks, which was part of the joining bonus. And I was able to ship them all out. Now, would I choose to always be in charge of that? Probably not. I feel like at a certain point, this is going to scale beyond what I can do in my basement. But I just allowed myself to buy the stamps.com shipping station stuff. So I have a bougie printer that prints out the stamps for me and the labels. Once I got a handle on that and the process, it was very, very smooth. So it didn't take me too much time. In the beginning, it was taking me like two hours to package up the boxes because it was just, I don't know. I was confused about it and like worried that I was going to mess it up and whatever. I'm over that now. And I'm glad that we explored shipping from my house. And I think we're exploring future options for coming up with a merch store so that students, MFR students can go ahead and purchase MFR coaching merch if they want it. So that's in the works. And that came out of being willing to be uncomfortable learning the shipping station methods and all the things. And you know what else was good about doing it from my house is I didn't have to stand in line at the post office then. I made a deal with my husband. He took all the boxes and he would just either have to drop them off at UPS or drop them off at the post office. And so there we just eliminated the step where we had to stand in line And we also were able to like verify all the shipping addresses this way. So I'm very hopeful that all the boxes made it to where they were going. They have tracking and none of them were going to get returned. We had some issues earlier with uh, boxes that went to wrong addresses. So very excited about that. Hey, listener, did you know that I have a free patience guide available for you to use with your patients? That's right. Go to my website, www.themfrcoach.com and look for the MFR ebook. Click the button to download the patient's guide to getting the most out of your MFR sessions. This resource will help you talk to your patients and help them better understand what's possible for them when they get MFR. 
This is one of the many resources I offer to my paid coaching clients. Download it for free today. I also was really aware of how my body reacts during high stress launch periods. So I think, you know, we have that good stress of like the excitement of people joining and the excitement of talking about what it is that you do that I do that I love so much. And then also like that is stress on my body. I have a connective tissue disease and I get flares in my body. And so I've been trying to track like what causes those, like, do I have any control over the flare and can I minimize it? And so I bought an aura ring and I've been tracking my daily stress with that. I quit working out actually, because I was doing a lot of weight training and I found that the weight training was starting to hurt me more than it was serving me. And I might go back to light weight training later on, but for now I'm taking a break. I did start working out with a Pilates trainer, which was good. But then you'll see when I do my evaluation on what didn't go well, how that didn't quite end up being good for me during this period of time. But I did plan weekly body work and I scheduled and planned MFR treatments for the end of the launch when I finally got to Austin. You'll hear me talk about this in the what would I do differently next time. So let's talk about what didn't go well with this launch. So I think while I don't regret traveling and going to as many MFR seminars as I did, I call it my MFR seminar blitz, and I'm probably going to continue to be on one for this year. I did over nine trips, including dropping my son off at college in just over 90 days. I went to Bozeman, Montana. I went to Boston with a friend. So some of these were personal trips and some of them were business. I went to Kansas City. I went to the Oregon coast. I went back to Bozeman. I went to Rochester, Minnesota. And then I went to Kansas City. And then I went to Austin and bookended that trip with a business trip in Austin. So that was a lot of trip. And maybe that only adds up to eight. I don't know, whatever. I also started to get sick while I was coming home from Austin. And I figured that was coming. You know, you fly on that many planes, you do that many things, you're around that many people, like you're probably going to get sick. So I did start to get sick, but also my body like really didn't let me get that sick. So I sound a little kind of congested, but that's the extent of it. So that's great. I mentioned earlier that I started working with a Pilates trainer a few weeks before my launch. And during that time, I threw my back out. (laughs) I could kind of tell that my pelvis was unstable and I had been at fascial, I was like leading up to go to fascial pelvis. And like right before that, I did this move in Pilates and I just totally wrecked my sacrum and my tailbone. I wasn't panicking about it though, because my body does very weird things when I'm under stress and I can have 10 out of 10 pain and one day and it can just like go away. So I trust that even when these things creep up, like they're solvable and always there's MFR, right? Anyway, I did throw my back out and I was in 10 out of 10 pain while I gave the webinar. I don't know if anyone could tell, but it was excruciating and I was just so glad to make it through that. I had that to do over again. Like I would never want to be in 10 out of 10 pain while I'm trying to teach a class of that magnitude to that many people. But it is what it is. I'm super proud of myself that I was able to do it. I would do it again if I had to. It's just that important to me. And I also continued to have pain for my entire launch and while traveling and while sitting in MFR seminars. And I was just thankful though, to have the opportunity to be with my pain, if that makes sense. There was no getting away from it. I did learn lessons from it. I am in awe of my body and what it can go through, especially with the amount of inflammation that I tend to have. And also I am in awe of the work of MFR. You know, I trust in the work. I will go to the medical doctor if I need to and when needed. But I knew that I was going to have three hours of MFR. I was going to get co-treated at the end of this trip and that everything was going to be okay. And that is really what happened. My back is feeling a lot better. I knew that it wasn't going to feel better instantly and that it was going to take a few days. It's now been about a week since I had treatment and things are a lot better. I'm back to being able to walk around on purpose. I've been going for walks daily and just getting back into really light exercise. 
So outside of the pain issues, we had a couple of other things that didn't go well. And these were tech issues. In the first couple of days of the launch, the links that were in sent out in the emails didn't work or they showed up as not being secure, which is like the worst thing that I want someone to see if they click on a link that I'm sending out, right? Luckily, I have such awesome people that want to join the program, you know, they reach out and let me know. And that's usually how I find out that there is a tech issue. And I've talked with my tech person, and we've kind of figured out a plan for next time for what we'll do differently to try to avoid that in the first place, but how we can see it happen before you guys see it happen. And there's probably just always going to be tech issues. So I've learned to not get super dramatic or worked up about that. I also think that the cart open period was just too long. It was 15 days long. A lot of people joined in the beginning and a lot of people joined at the end. And I'd like to just kind of cut out that middle part so we're not screwing around. And then I don't have to be on that whole time. I don't have to be so involved for 15 days straight, like wondering how it's going to turn out. We'll just have an answer right away, which I would like to try for next time. So let's talk about what I would do differently next time. I would have the webinar training after the sign up as a VIP bonus for joining the program. I really do think that the amount of time and effort that's put into these trainings, they should be paid for. Like you should be a member of the program to get it. And then, then not only that, like it should be a VIP bonus for joining the program. So I think we will explore doing something like that. Next time, I would make the car open period shorter. Like I said before, I would have a list of client objections and responses prepared ahead of time and use those. I, I will gather them from this launch that we just did and use those in reels, in social media content, and in emails to directly answer the objections that people have. And objections are just questions. So all the questions that people have get do a better job of really focusing on those and answering those. I think one way to do that would be to have a live panel with current and past students to discuss what it's like being in the actual program and allow prospective students to ask questions directly to the other students in the program and to me. And I think I would like to do a slower onboarding process with new clients where you join and then because it's a shorter joining period, we have a specific date, we have a special call for all the new people. We go through all of the onboarding procedures, joining the Facebook group, joining the podcast replay, like filling out a weekly report. We do it all together so that they're together as this like little group before they join the big group. I think that might feel better to everybody. And then everybody knows how to log in. Like everybody knows how to do each step of the process. So then by the time they come to a live coaching call, they already know what to expect. So we're going to play around with that. All right. So those are really the only things that I would do differently next time. Oh, and I think one more thing I would add to that is I think I should try getting a slew of MFR treatments right before like leading up to the car open. So that might involve me like driving down to Iowa to see my client Jonathan or flying over to Chicago and see my client Megan or driving up to Madison and seeing Deidre over there. So I have options. I just need to plan it out better and um, more future casting so that I make sure that I'm doing that ahead of time. I also have on my list to do a T for T this year. And I would really like to take my daughter and get treatment together in Sedona or in Malvern. So I need to plan for those things. All right. So let's talk about what the results were of this launch. So we had 27 students enroll, which is absolutely amazing. We have the best group now of over 80 therapists in the 12-month program. This is very, very good. The more MFR therapists that join and get this specific help in their businesses, I really feel like the better the world will be. And I couldn't be more proud and more excited and more happy and scared all at the same time because I've just never had a group this large. I'm really excited though because of all of the thought that has gone into creating this program and creating everything that that the students have access to has been built with the intention of scaling to hundreds of people in the group. So we have the infrastructure, we have the content, and you have the coach, me and my co-coaches that are available to help 
as this scales. So it still has the same feeling and the same results as when it was less people, which is just awesome. And people are reporting all the time, you know, hitting their goals, making more money than ever, seeing more clients than ever, getting fully booked, leaving their jobs. It's awesome. When I started this coaching practice back in October of 2020, I really had no idea how it would be accepted into our community. And MFR therapists sometimes are kind of a tough crowd. <laughs> like they're a crowd of me. And I'm, I think I'm kind of tough to convince sometimes or to be open to help. So I just had no idea if people would even want my help. And I battled all the thoughts of who did I think I was? And people aren't going to like this. And you are going to fail and lose everything. And everyone is going to laugh at you. I really battled that a lot in the beginning. And I took a major risk when I closed my practice to do coaching full time. And I also had thoughts that some people won't like that I don't have an MFR practice anymore. And likely some of you don't like that, but it is what it is. I've had to make that decision in order to make this program as great as it is. And I don't regret it. I feel so thankful for my MFR practice and for the people that I was able to serve in that and for John Barnes for this training. And it's okay for me to be doing this now. I've really learned that the only person that has to truly like what I am doing is me. At the end of the day, I'm the one alone with myself. And I've had to learn how to trust myself and how to like and love the decisions that I make. And most of all, how to let people be wrong about me. And that's the one that is like the most yucky one is like allowing people to just be wrong about me, to have their own thoughts and their own opinions and maybe not like what I'm doing or think that I have some special help. <laughs> and it's just not the truth. So it's all right. I'm learning more and more that that's okay. And I think the other interesting experience is going to seminars as the MFR coach is one of the scariest things that I think I do. <laughs> it feels so vulnerable, but I just keep doing it. I keep doing it because the mission is more important than my feelings. And over time, I'm learning how to expand my discomfort zone to be able to go more often and to be more myself and for it to be less draining on me and for it to be less of a thing, right? Like I'm just practicing and experiencing and playing with this because I'm never going to stop going to MFR seminars because I always want my tools to be sharp. And I always want to know what's going on with MFR therapists and what better place to figure that out than to go to seminars. So I'm always going to be going, that's not going to be going away. I now have so many clients that go to seminars that have coached with me. It's almost impossible not to run into a familiar face. And I just love that because the support that my MFR clients give me, my MFR students that are in the coaching program is amazing. Like I have to pinch myself when I see so many of you out in the audience at these seminars wearing the shirts that I gave you just because you want to support me and you want people to know that you're a client. It really is moving and it really is, it's like an experience that I can't quite put into words, but my eyes are getting really wet right now, just even talking about it. So it just, it means a lot to me. And it also is just mind blowing. And I appreciate it so much. And it's so fun. I even started making myself wear my t-shirt. And I think I, <laughs> I felt kind of nerdy doing it because I'm like, I'm wearing a shirt with my name on it. But I'm doing it because I want people to know that I am the MFR coach and that I will answer your questions and that I am one of you. So I can do it. I can feel like a nerd. It's fine. I am a nerd. The other really funny thing is like I got recognized at an airport <laughs> and I was like, oh no, now I need to start not looking like a homeless person when I travel. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> this just makes me laugh. Anyway, I want to take a minute and just celebrate everyone that listens to this podcast, everyone that's become now part of the program, everyone that's thinking about becoming a part of the program. And just say thank you. Thank you for trusting me to help you with your MFR business. Thank you for being so exact and specific about the help that you want. And for putting it into action. 
It's up to us MFR therapists as a profession to make MFR mainstream. We can't wait for hospitals and doctors and medical journals to do it for us. We have to take the reins and we have to do the work. This starts with your MFR business being successful and by you helping as many people as you can while you never underearn and you never burn out. I want you to know that we will reopen enrollment in February. The time period will be much shorter, so start preparing yourself now to join. Get your questions answered and be ready to opt in. There's no benefit to waiting to be comfy to join, and I can't wait to see you there. So keep following this podcast, keep following social media so you never miss a thing. I'm so excited to see you on another episode of the MFR Coaches Podcast. See you next week. Take care. Bye. Thanks for joining me today. If you enjoyed today's episode, please take a minute and rate and review the podcast. I appreciate it. For more information, please follow me on Facebook and Instagram at The MFR Coach. And check out my website, www.themfrcoach.com for more information. If you are currently not working 20 hours or less and making six figures in your MFR business, I want to help you change that. Make sure you tune into the show and get on my email list so you never miss out on important trainings and information. To be the first to find out when we are enrolling next for my 12-month business foundations coaching program, get on that email list at www.themfrcoach.com backslash join. Inside this program, you'll learn how to raise your rate, overcome objections, and sell MFR. You'll become the MFR therapist that never under earns and never burns out. It's up to us to make MFR mainstream, and it starts with you and your successful MFR practice. See you next week.